In this video, we will demonstrate how to manage the Docker processes in Lifecycle using Java Client APIs. The first task is to create a Maven project, and we should all be familiar how to create a project. Click on File, followed by New, and select Maven Project. Then select the archetype Quick Start. We will specify the group ID as Sample2, and use the same as Artifact ID. Now our project sample2 is created. We need to configure the JRE system library with the current version of JDK. Maven has generated J2SC 1.5 for now. Right click on the project and access the properties. Select the JRE system library to edit. We will add the right version, which is Java SC 1.8. Click finish, and then apply the changes. The next task is to configure the Docker Java client so we are able to use Java APIs for Docker. Let's access the pom.xml file, which is in the configuration file for Maven. In pom.xml, we will find that there is an existing dependency in the dependency section, and that existing dependency is JUnit. Since we want APIs for the Docker client, we have to add another dependency. The dependency must always be added in the dependency stack. So locate the dependencies and add these lines. The entry is the artifact ID, and it is specified as Docker Java, which is universal. The second entry is the group ID, which is specified as com.github.docker.java. This ID reflects the group of APIs that it belongs to. Finally, there's version. Whenever a new version is available, and we want to use the new version, we have to change this version, and our library will update it with the new version. After having added this dependency, we can access the Maven dependency folder, where we will find the existing JUnit dependency. Save the new ones, and we will get all the new libraries that are required to manage Docker using Java API. There's Docker Java, which provides all the APIs. Within the core package, we will find the default Docker client config class and we will be using some of these classes. This is a large list of APIs, and for RESTful web services, we are provided with Docker Jobber RS, which provides various methods in the form of REST services. Now we can begin writing our Docker Java client. When we access the SRC main Java folder, we will find a package sample2 sample2, which contains default class app.java. We can either use this class, or we can create a new one. For now, we will use this class. The skeleton of this program is public class app, and it contains certain statements that can print hello world by executing public static void main. We will first create a default docker client config, and that default docker client config will contain details about the docker host to which our docker client will connect. Let's configure the default docker client config we will add a class by writing default, and when we hit a combination of control and spacebar keys, the auto assist will pop up. We will add default docker client config, so we can get a client config which we will name as client config. Now client config is equal to default docker client config. And this client config has a factory method which we can use to create a default config builder. This builder contains a method to build a default Docker client config. Before building the default Docker client config, we can pass certain parameters. For example, one such parameter is with Docker host. And this is a mandatory parameter which can help specify the IP and port of our Docker host. In our case, the Docker host IP is 192.168.99.100. And the port is 2376. Then we will add the command build. When we call build, it will create an instance of this config class, which we will need to pass whenever we call any Docker tasks. The next task is to create an instance of Docker client, which will be responsible for calling the methods in order to perform Docker tasks. We will specify client is equal to Docker client builder, which is a factory method that we can use to build the Docker client. Then we will add the getInstance method which takes the docker client config 
and we will pass the client config that we have configured in the previous statement. Finally, we will add the command build because until and unless we can build it, it will not read or create an instance of Docker client. So now we have configured our Docker client, which will communicate with a Docker engine at this particular IP and port. The next task is to specify how to list the containers along with certain properties. In order to list the container, we will add the list interface from java.util and pass container because we only want to list the containers. To make it type safe, we will specify containers is equal to client. This is a client that we have already declared. We will also be adding a method from among these methods provided by auto assist or autocomplete. So we will add list containers cmd. Then we will pass a certain parameter, which is with show all. We are passing show all because we want to list all the containers. Now by default, it will just pull a list of running containers, but we want a list of all the containers, regardless of their existing status. Then we will pass a boolean value true, following which we will add the method execute. Now this method will execute the list containers command and return the appropriate value. We need to ensure that we are using the right container. So let me try correcting this persisting error with the list statement. Now we are using the container from the model instead of taking it from the command. After we have listed the container, we can begin iterating in the containers. All these tasks that we have specified can be executed from inside the main function. So we will cut the code block and paste it within the main function to avoid adding extra methods. Now we can specify the statement, get the name of all the containers. This iterator is an interface which helps us itinerate in a collection. Since we are using list as a collection, we need an iterator that can actually itinerate in the collection. Then we will pass container. We will specify it is equal to containers.iterator. This iterator method will return an iterator which is associated with this list called container. Now we can itinerate and get different containers from the list. So we will add while, followed by it.hasNext, which means it will continue until there are no further elements. Within this, we will add individual container. So we will specify container is equal to it.next. This will return an instance of the container because we have made it type safe by passing container to the list. Now after we have specified independent containers, we will print certain properties of the container. We will add system.out.println and pass container.getImage. This will print the image name, which is a string value. Then we will add some more entries. For example, we would like to print the current status of the container, so we will specify container.getStatus. Let's balance the curly braces and save these entries. We remove that curly brace because it was an extra. Now let's run it to check whether we are able to communicate with the Docker host or not. Right click and run as Java application. Now if it was able to communicate, it will display a list of containers. For example, this container Redis is created. There is another container which is running the same image and it has been running for the past 28 minutes. There's an Ubuntu container which is in a created state. So these are all the containers returned by the program irrespective of their states. Some of them are in a created state, some of them are in a running state, and some have exited state with different status codes. Now let's manage the life cycle of a container. So we will choose one container. For example, we will use this Redis container which is listed as the first container or element and which is in a created status. We will try to start this container using Java API. We will add a simple entry or a line to the code block. We will add client. Let's add it inside the main function. We will add client.startContainerCMD. And after specifying the method, we will pass the ID of the container which we want to start. In order to pass ID, we will specify containers, which is a collection followed by get index. 
And since the index of the first element is zero, we will pass zero. Then we will get the ID of this container by calling the method getID. And finally add the command execute. So this statement will be executed to start the container. But we have to ensure that the container is either in a created or exited state so we can start it. The transition from one state to another state has to be correctly balanced. If it is in an exited state, we can start it. But if it is already in a started state, we cannot try starting it again because it will throw an error on the console. Now let's run it again as a Java application. The console output indicates no changes to the state of the Redis container. We will go back to the code block and comment this line and save it. Let's ensure that there's no change in the container status. We will run it again as a Java application. Now the console output indicates the Redis container is up and running since the past 25 seconds. So this means that our command of starting a particular container has executed successfully, and it has started the specified container. Now let's try stopping the container. In order to stop the container, we will add a different line of code. We will add client.stopContainerCMD. We need the container ID as well, so we will add containers get index and pass the index as 1 in order to stop the other Redis container, which was already in a started state. Then we will add get ID followed by the command execute. Now when we run this code, it should stop the container and the console output will indicate the status of this Redis container as exited. Before running it, let's comment this code line, otherwise it will stop the container which is already exited. Let's run it as a Java application again. And now the console output indicates the specified Redis container has exited, which means that this container has stopped. From this video, we have learned how to manage the processes and lifecycle of Docker using Java Client APIs.